What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, January 11th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. The survival story of The Revenant earned the Golden Globe Awards for Best Movie Drama, Best Actor in the Drama for Leonardo DiCaprio, and Best Director for Alejandro G. Inaratu in Los Angeles Sunday night. DiCaprio's Titanic co-star Kate Winslet earned the title for Best Supporting Actress in the Movie for the biopic Steve Jobs, for which wordsmith Aaron Sorkin took home the trophy for Best Adapted Screenplay. Sylvester Stallone got a standing ovation when he accepted the Best Supporting Actor in the Movie accolade for his Rocky spinoff Creed, and Brie Larson was named Best Actress in a Movie Drama for her Mother's Son Kidnap Saga Room. The Space Tale The Martian scored the Golden Globe for Best Movie, Comedy, or Drama, and its star Matt Damon walked away with the statuette for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical, while Jennifer Lawrence picked up the trophy for Best Actress in a Movie, Comedy, or Musical for Joy, which is about the determined founder of a successful family business. Inside Out was deemed Best Animated Movie. Meanwhile, on television, Mozart in the Jungle was named Best Television Comedy and it starred Gael Garcia Bernal, Best Actor in a Television Comedy at the Golden Globe Awards. Rachel Bloom scored the honor for Best Actress in a Television Comedy for her work in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, while Lady Gaga accepted the trophy for Best Actress in a Limited Series or Movie for American Horror Story Hotel. Christian Slater took home the prize for Best Supporting Actor in a TV Series, Limited Series or Movie for Mr. Robot, the show that garnered the title for Best Television Drama. Taraji P. Henson was Selected Best Actress in a Television Drama for Empire, and John Hamm was declared Best Actor in a Drama for Mad Men. The Affair, cast member Maura Tierney earned the honor for Best Supporting Actress in a Television Series, Limited Series, or Movie, and Oscar Isaac won the Globe for Best Actor in a Limited Series or TV Movie for Show Me a Hero. Wolf Hall was deemed the Best Limited Series or TV Movie. English comedian Ricky Gervais kicked off the 73rd annual Golden Globe Awards Sunday night with a beer in hand and a lot of list of disparagements. The 54-year-old star who was hosting the award show for the fourth time made fun of presenters, nominees, and former hosts throughout the show. Some of his most notable victims were Sean Penn, who he said, I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding. Not even Sean Penn will find me. On Caitlyn Jenner, he said, I'm going to be very nice tonight. I've changed not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Jennifer Lawrence made headlines when she deemed equal pay for women in Hollywood. There were marches on the street with nurses and factory workers saying, how the hell can a 25-year-old live on $52 million? Towards Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, he said, I'm getting paid exactly the same as Tina and Amy last year. Of course, there were two of them, but it's not my fault if they want to share the money, is there? Towards Matt Damon, he says, the next presenter is the star of the comedy The Martian. He's the only person who Ben Affleck hasn't been unfaithful to. Towards Eva Longoria and American Ferrara, Eva Longoria and American Ferrara aren't just two beautifully talented actresses. There are also two people who your future president, Donald Trump, can't wait to deport. And towards Charlie Sheen, he said, Joy and Trainwreck, no, they're not the names of Charlie Sheen's two favorite hookers. They're the films of our next two presenters. They're best friends, by the way. They want me to tell you that. Bridge of Spies and Carol lead the field with nine nods apiece when the nominations for the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Awards for Excellence in Cinema were announced Friday. Revelin followed close behind with eight mentions, while Mad Max Fury Road garnered seven, and Brooklyn and the Martian earned six. The Big Short, The Danish Girl, and Ex Machina received five nominations, and Star Wars The Force Awakens got four. The British Academy Film Awards will be presented February 14th at the Royal Opera House in London. Stephen Fry is to host the event, which will be broadcast on the BBC. The nominees are, for Best Film, the nominees include The Big Short, Bridge of Spies, The Revenant, Carol, and Spotlight. For Best Actress, nominees include Brid Larson for Room, Sharozi Ronan for Brooklyn, Kate Blanchett for Carol, Alicia Van Kander for The Danish Girl, and Dave Maggie Smith for Lady in the Van. For Best Actor, the nominees include Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant, Eddie Redmayne for The Danish Girl, Michael Fassbender for Steve Jobs, Matt Damon for The Martian, 
and Brian Cranston for Trumbull. For Best Supporting Actress, the nominees include Kate Winslet for Steve Jobs, Lisa Van Kander for Ex Machina, Rooney Mara for Carol, Jennifer Jason Leigh for The Hateful Eight, and Julie Walters for Brooklyn. For Best Supporting Actor, the nominees include Benicio Del Toro for Sicario, Christian Bale for The Big Short, Idris Elba for Beasts of No Nation, Mark Ruffalo for Spotlight, and Mark Ray Lance for Bridge of Spies. For Outstanding British Film, the nominees include 45 Years, Amy, Brooklyn, The Danish Girl, Ex Machina, and The Lobster. For Best Documentary, the nominees include Amy, Cartel Land, His Na- He Named Me Malala, Listen to Me Marlon, Sherpa. For Best Animated Film, the nominees include Inside Out, Minions, and Shaun the Sheep, the movie. For Best Director, the nominees include Adam McKay for The Big Short, Steven Spielberg for Bridge of Spies, Todd Haynes for Carol, Ridley Scott for The Martian, and Alejandro G. Inaratu for The Revenant. Angelina Jolie worked with four of her children on Kung Fu Panda 3. The four-year-old actress confirmed as much through her rep to E! News on Thursday. Jolie revealed Pax, Sahara, Shiloh, and Knox have some lines in the animated movie and previously told Entertainment Tonight her kids provided animal noises. She said they were kind of shy. They don't really want to be actors, but I didn't want them to miss the opportunity. They came in and they had a lot of fun with it. Jolie is also the mother to son Maddox and daughter Vivian with husband Brad Pitt. The couple recently co-starred in By the See their first film together since Mr. and Mrs. Smith and employed Maddox as a production assistant on the romantic drama. Pitt said at the movie's premiere, we want to make it a family affair and have the kids running in and out of set. Matt and I are now producing a film in Cambodia about his country and his history, so we love working together. Jolie added of, first they killed my father. Pax, Sahara, and Vivian also worked with Jolie on the Disney movie Magnificent, while Maddox and Shiloh appeared in Pitt's films The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and World War X. The actor previously told E his kids would have to wait until the age of 18 to act. Jolie voices Tigris in the Kung Fu Panda franchise, which stars Jack Black as the Panda Poe. Kung Fu Panda 3 opens in theaters January 29th, and the actress is also expected to star in Maleficent and Salt sequels. Laura Dern is reuniting with iconic director David Lynch for the upcoming Showtime revival Twin Peaks, expected to premiere in the summer of 2017. The series will star Twin Peaks veteran Kyle MacLachlan, Cheryl Lee, and Sherline Fenn, as well as newcomers Robert Nepler, Balazar Getty, and Amanda Seyfried. TV Line reported the latest casting news, but said details regarding Dern's character are being closely guarded. Lynch and co-creator Mark Frost have written all of the episodes from the small screen reboot, with Lynch directing each installment. The original series ran for two seasons. It was followed by the 1992 movie Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Dern and Lynch previously worked together on Blue Velvet, Wild at Heart, and Inland Empire. Hugh Laurie will star on the new Hulu series Chance. The 56-year-old English actor will play Eden Chance, a forensic neuropsychiatrist who is sucked into, quote, a violent and dangerous world of mistaken, mistaken identity, police corruption, and mental illness after taking on an alluring patient with possible multiple personality disorders. Chance must contend with the patient's abusive police detective spouse while dealing with his own divorce and troubled teenage daughter. The series will see the character delve deeper into, quote, the shadowy undiscovered country of the human mind as the show progresses. Chance is based on the Kim Nunn novel of the same name and will feature Room Helmer Lenny Abramson as executive producer and director on several episodes. Nunn and Alexander Cunningham adapted the novel and will co-executive produce with Cunningham also serving as show showrunner. Fox 21 TV Studios President Burke Salk said in a statement, it was very challenging to get the depth and fullness of the book, but they did a phenomenal job surpassing all expectations. Hugh has very strong feelings and he will be involved in every aspect of production. He added of the actor who will also serve as executive producer. Laurie is best known for playing Dr. Gregory House on Fox's series House and has since portrayed Senator Tom James on HBO's comedy V. He will star on AMC's forthcoming adaptation of The Nightmare manager with Tom Hiddleston and provide a voice role in the Canterville Ghost. Filmmaker M. Night Shyamalan is to curate a new two-hour block of terror and suspense programming, including a remake of Tales from the Crypt for TNT. The block will feature both short and long-form storytelling. It is set to premiere this fall. Sarah Aubrey, the executive vice president of original programming for TNT, said in a statement Thursday, This is a new genre for us in our series efforts and a great chance to partner with M. Night Shyamalan, whose blockbuster hit The Visit reminded movie audiences and critics this past summer that he is truly 
is a master of horror. This two hour horror block demonstrates not only TNT's commitment to work with today's top talents, but also our strategy to stand out in today's marketplace by challenging the conventional rules of programming and scheduling. Uh, Shyamalan added, I couldn't be more excited to be teaming up with Kevin Riley, Sarah Aubrey, and the entire TNT team in this unique endeavor. To be part of such a beloved brand like Tales from the Crypt, something I grew up watching, and to also have the chance to pull the boundaries of genre television as a whole is an inspiring opportunity that I can't wait to dive into. Shyamalan's films include The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Signs, The Village, and Lady in the Water. He also was the executive producer of the TV series Wayward Pines. After seven seasons of detective work mishaps, TNT's long-running drama Rizzoli and Isles will come to a close. Turner Executive uh, Turner Entertainment Chief Creative Officer Kevin Riley Thursday confirmed the news at the Television Critics Association press tour. According to E! Online, the final season will air with 13 episodes this summer. When asked if the cancellation came by the show's actresses, Riley indicated that Rizzoli and Isles star Angie Harmon and Sasha Alexander would probably do more episodes. Riley said, I think both ladies have had a really satisfying experience and sort of indicated that they, I don't know if they wouldn't be, wouldn't do any more, but they felt very comfortable. The producers felt that way. It had its good run. We all kind of discussed it and everyone said, yeah, let's finish out 13 great ones and call it a day. We felt good about that. The criminal procedural Harmon stars as police detective Jane Rizzoli and Alexander plays medical examiner Dr. Mara Isles. Although it maintained a status as one of the top cable programs since it premiered in 2010, the show faded after its first two seasons, reported Variety magazine. HBO has announced that the highly anticipated sixth season of their fantasy drama series Game of Thrones will be premiering on April 24th. The day, which is later than normal for Emmy Award for the Emmy Award winning show, also serves as the premiere date of the network's critically acclaimed comedies Silicon Valley and Veep. In the past, the new season of Game of Thrones would debut in either late March or early to mid-April, but due to the late launches dates of HBO's winter block consisting of 70s record label drama Vinyl, the C- Season 6 premiere of Girls and the Season 2 start of Togetherness has pushed it back. The company announced the premiere date on th- on Twitter Thursday by posting a photo of the date in the series' distinctive font. Earlier this month, Game of Thrones author J.R.R. Martin announced that the publication of his next book in the Song of Ice and Fire series entitled The Winds of Winter has been delayed and unfortunately will not be released before Season 6 has aired. The show's This will, for the first time, allow viewers of the show to proceed further into the story of Thrones than that of readers of the book series. Actress Sandy Newton has received an apology from Starbucks after she slammed the coffee giant for an offensive display she came across at one of their stores. Earlier this week, Newton went tweeted out to her followers an offensive statue she noticed at a Starbucks location in London to promote Colombian coffee beans. The Crash Star tweeted on Monday, bringing awareness to the statue. Um, seriously, at Starbucks, at the counter, loincloth and safari hat on a black child. The display was seen as offensive for depicting a dark-skinned child wearing a loincloth and safari hat while holding a bowl of Colombian beans. Starbucks quickly issued an apology to the actress on Twitter, writing, We are very concerned to learn of this incident, and we can apologize enough. We have removed the figure and are investigating. The company then issued an official statement on the display after it started to draw attention on social media. They said, Serving as a welcoming place for everyone is core to who we are as a company. As we became aware of the offense, we immediately remove the figure from our store. We aim to provide an inclusive environment for all customers and communities in which we serve, and we are working with our partners, employees, to avoid similar incidents from happening in the future. We apologize for the offense caused. Starbucks is recently coming off its holiday red cup controversy in which plain red cups the coffee shop used during the holidays were deemed by some as part of a war on Christmas. Netflix has released the first photos from Fuller House, the sequel series to the beloved family comedy Full House. Uh, The synopsis said, in Fuller House, the adventure that began in 1987 on Full House continues with veteran DJ Tanner Fuller, played by Candace Cameron Burr, recently widowed and living in Los Angeles. DJ's younger sister, aspiring musician Stephanie Tanner, played by Jody Sweetening, and DJ's lifelong best friend and fellow single mother, Kimmy Gibbler, played by Andrea Barber, along with Kimmy's feisty teenage daughter, Ramona, played by Sona Nicole Bringas, all move in to help take care of DJ's three 
boys. The rebellious 12-year-old Jackson, played by Michael Champion, neurotic 7-year-old Max, played by Elias Harger, and their newborn baby Tommy Jr., played by the Messi Twins. Set to premiere via the streaming service February 26, the show will also feature guest appearances by original cast members John Stamos, Bob Saget, Dave Coulier, and Lori Laughlin. A teaser trailer released last month for the follow-up show featured the family's iconic house and the voices of its cast members, but did not show the characters. Thursday's Netflix photos have the stars reprising their roles in the familiar locale. The sole surviving full-scale model of the shark from Steven Spielberg's 1975 film Jaws has been donated to the Academy Museum in Los Angeles. Gifted to the institution by Nathan Aldlin, the fiberglass fish is the fourth and final version made from the production's original mold. It was created for a display at Universal Studios Hollywood at the time of the film's release and remained a popular backdrop for photos until 1990 when it was banished to the yard of Aldlin's brother's auto wrecking, a Sun Valley firm that rarely bought or hauled used vehicles from Universal Studios. As the business prepared to close this month, owner Adeline donated the prop to the museum. The shark model joins a collection that also includes the underwater apparatus and fin used in Jaws and Jaws 2. The piece also is the largest object to enter the museum's collection to date. Amy Schumer says she and boyfriend Ben Hanish didn't meet on a dating app. The 34-year-old train wreck star denied reports of such on social media Thursday after news. She and Hanish are, are dating broke this week. Schumer told fans she never in her life been on Bumble, a dating app that only allows women to initiate contact. Uh, she captioned hashtag TBT me and my date to the globes hashtag road manager captioned a throwback photo of herself and sister Kim Car- Carlemay on Instagram. She also captioned on Instagram, my BF will be there too, and we did not meet on Bumble. Great site, just not how we met. Schumer and Hanish went public with their relationship by attending President Barack Obama's speech on gun control Tuesday at the White House. The actress who shared photos from the event online already has the approval of Hanish's mother, Deborah Hanish. She told, Deborah Hanish told Time Magazine, if they're happy, I'm happy. That's all a parent can ever ask for. I've had never, I, had never really heard of Amy, but I think she's terrific. She's so sweet. I haven't really asked too many questions yet. It's very exciting for them. Schumer posted a new photo with her bow Wednesday to support her to to show her support for the National MS Society. Sources told People the actress is so happy, saying Han- um, Hanish constantly tells the star how pretty, sexy, and perfect she is. Schumer came to fame on NBC's reality competition Last Comic Standing and has starred on her own Comedy Central series Inside Amy. Schumer. Schumer since 2013. The sketch comedy series will return for a fourth season in the spring. Keegan-Michael Key, the star of the award-winning comedy duo Key and Peele, was not looking to ring in the new year as married man. The comedian spent New Year's Eve filing for divorce from actress and dialect coach Cynthia Blasé, his wife of 17 years. According to the divorce paper, Key and Blasé have been separated since November. People magazine reported that Key cited irreconcilable differences in the court documents and is asking a delay on deciding the issue of spousal support until a later date. Blasé has appeared in several episodes of Key and Peel, the Comedy Central sketch show. The couple started together in a Second City video short titled Meditations of Yoga, Ode to a Cougar, in 2010. The two married in 1998 and have no children together. Channing Tatum rocked the stage with Beyonce for an epic performance during Spike TV's season two premiere of Limp Sick Battle. The actor was facing off against his wife, Jenna Dewan Tatum, who kicked things off with the performance of Cold Hearted Snake, where she was joined by singer Paula Abdul. Jenna also turned heads by channeling her husband in a Magic Michaelist performance of Genuine's Pony. It was Channing, however, who stole the show, however, when he appeared on stage riding a plastic horse dressed in Beyonce's strapless bra black bra, and gold choker. The 35-year-old then went into a performance of the Pog Mega Star's hit single, Run the World Girls, before he was joined by Beyonce herself. The crowd, Jenna and host LL Cool J and Chrissy Teigen collectively lost their minds as Channing and Beyonce danced side-by-side side among a crowd of backup dancers. Jenna exclaimed after the dance, I cannot believe that just happened. I'm freaking out. Tila Tequila shocked fans with a bizarre Twitter rant this week. The 34-year-old reality star has been posting a lengthy and exploitative laden diatribe on the social media site and made headlines after arguing Wednesday that the Earth 
is flat. She wrote, why are all the buildings in New York City standing straight up? If Earth was round, then some of the buildings would have a slight tilt. Hashtag flat Earth. Tequila Lair claimed she died in 2012 and is now a clone and suggested something similar happened to Democrat presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton. She tweeted, Hillary Clinton is a clone. The real one got killed a long time ago. I hope I'm not next. Oh, wait, they already killed me in 2012. Tequila also referred to herself as an alien and a Martian and reportedly called herself Lucifer. She mused on how the number 33 and 23 are constantly following her around and expressed fear about a, a potential assassination attempt and the CIA. The strange post raised concerns for Tequila's daughter Isabella, of whom the star posted a new photo on New, Year, new Year's e- Day. The television personality welcomed her daughter in November 2014 and has yet to reveal the father's identity. The star wrote on her blog last January, I must say that being a mother is hands down the hardest job I've ever had in my life, but almost also the most rewarding. On top of being a mother, I'm also a single parent, which makes it slightly even harder since I have to do everything my own. Tequila came to fame on MySpace and went on to star on MTV's reality series, A Shot at Love with Tequila. She also appeared on Celebrity Big Brother in August, but was kicked off the Channel 5 show due to comments about Adolf Hitler. Playboy Enterprise is selling the Playboy Mansion and the six-acre estate on which it sits and asking the price will be at least $200 million. TMZ reported the Homeby Hills property is to be listed next month. A stipulation to the sale is that 89-year-old Playboy founder Hugh Hefner must be allowed to continue living there for the rest of his life. The estate has a well-known history since Hefner hosted countless wild parties for celebrities at the mansion, which was built in 1927. Hefner's home is also where much of his reality show The Girl Next Door was shot. Kendall Jenner and Harry Styles are indeed dating, according to Khloe Kardashian. Kardashian commented on her 19-year-old half-sister's relationship with the 21-year-old singer to Entertainment Tonight while promoting her FYI talk show Cocktails with Khloe. The 31-year-old reality star said, Do I think they're dating? Yes. I don't know if they're like boyfriend-girlfriend. Nowadays, I don't know. People are just weird with stuff, so I don't know their title. But I mean, they were in St. Bart's together hanging out, so to me, that's dating. Jenner and Styles sent fans into a frenzy by a vacationing together last week in the Caribbean. The pair, who were previously linked in late 2013 and early 2014, looked very much like a couple when they were spotted cozying up and kissing on a yacht. Ellen DeGermanis, who was on the same boat as the rumored couple, also appeared to confirm they are dating at the 2016 People's Choice Awards on Wednesday. Uh, the talk show host told the website she's She's like them together, calling the pair very sweet. Source told people of the pair's romantic past, they have fun then, but things never got serious. Harry has thought all along that Kendall is hot and was sort of just wanting for a chance to spend more time with her again. New Year's worked out perfectly, and he loved it. Jenner is known for her modeling work with Chanel and Balmain and continues to star on her family's e-reality series, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Styles is a member of the British boy band One Direction, which began a, a year-long hiatus in December. Justin Bieber, vacationing in Mexico, was asked to leave an archaeological site after entering a prohibited area, then pulling down his pants after getting caught. Adrian Velasquez Morlet, director of the National Institute of Anthropology and History, confirmed to Entertainment Tonight that the 21-year-old Sari artist was asked to leave the Mayan ruins. Velasquez Morlet said Friday, I can confirm to you that Mr. Bieber was kicked out of the Tulum archaeological site yesterday. He and his mates pulled his pants down and insulted our staff at the site. She added, we have a very strict policy of conservation and respect of the Mexican cultural heritage. That appeals equally to all our visitors, whether or not they're famous. On the same day, Bieber posted a message to Twitter referring to great times today. He preserves some different memories of Instagram posting photos of him relaxing at the beach near his resort. He captioned one pic, woke up outside to the sound of the ocean. This has to be one of my top memories. ABC News reported that several days before Bieber had visited a native mine ecotourism camp and was described by a representative as completely respectful. Bieber is also there with rumored girlfriend Haley Baldwin. 
Music superstar Lady Gaga will appear nude with her fiancé, actor Taylor Kinley, on the cover of the next issue of V Magazine, for which he served as guest editor. People Magazine said Ki- Gaga and Kinley snapped their mirror selfie after having sex on a painting canvas in Chicago. Proceeds for the sale of the issue, which will be available Thursday and will feature 16 different covers, will go to raise money for Gaga's Born This Way Foundation. Lady Gaga said, I cannot complete the covers of this issue without relinquishing one to an important cause. She also added, since we first met, Taylor has been painting and drawing all over me years ago when we were secretly living in San Diego and crashing on the floor of a beach shack. We never wore shoes. He told me he wanted to make love to me on a canvas. And though he made my many murals on my body in the wee small hours of our stoked gypsy mornings with our friends, for whatever reason, we never got around to it. Kenny took the photo with the camera to commemorate the day his fantasy became reality. Gaga seen sitting behind Kenny with her arms around her bow. They're both splatted with paint. BBC America says it plans to air a Valentine's Day television special starring sing sensation Adele. Adele Live in London will feature the singer-songwriter performing classic tracks as well as songs from her latest album 25. The show includes the first television performance of Skyfall since the 2013's 85th Academy Awards where Adele won the Oscar for Best Original Song for the James Bond theme. Grand Norton, the show's host, declared in a statement, this is the music event of the year. This opportunity to spend an hour at Adele her music and her stories is a truly rare treat. If I wasn't hosting the special, I'd be sad at home watching it. The cable network also offered details about its ape part Patrick Ness Penn, Doctor Who spinoff class, as well as Prey, a six-episode thriller starring John Sim, Philip Glens- Glenn Nister, and Rosie Calaverio. Rapper Kanye West announced via Twitter that his next album, Swish, will drop de- February 16th. West tweeted late Friday, Swish, February 11th, 16, without offering further details. This will be the recording artist's seventh studio album and his follow-up to 2013's Jesus. West, who recently welcomed his second child, son Saint, with wife Kim Kardashian West, was last month named GQ's Most Stylish Man for a second year in a row. Star Wars The Force Awakens is the number one movie in North America for a fourth consecutive weekend, Rantrack announced Sunday. The blockbuster, which set a new record when it crossed a $1 billion global milestone just 12 days after it was released, added $41.6 million to Disney coffers in the United States and Canada. Coming in at number two in North America during the same frame is The Revenant with $38 million, followed by Daddy's Home at number three with $15 million, The Forest at number four with $13.1 million, and Sisters at number five with $7.2 million. Rounding out the top tier are The Hateful Eight at number six with $6.4 million, The Big Short at number seven with $6.3 million, Alvin and Chipmunks The Road Chip at number eight with $5.5 million, Joy at number nine with $4.5 million, and Concussion at number 10 with $3.1 million. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1992, Paul Simon returns to Johannesburg, South Africa, with the blessing of the United Nations. In 1985, singer-songwriter Paul Simon made a controversial nine-day visit to South Africa, a visit that some felt was in violation of the United Nations cultural boycott, but a visit that dramatically increased worldwide awareness of black South Africa's rich musical traditions. Seven years later, with the United Nations boycott lifted, Simon returned to the South Africa to play a historic concert in Johannesburg on this day in 1992. It was only appropriate that Paul Simon become the first major international star to perform in South Africa after the lifting of the UN boycott. With the full support of the ANC and its recently freed leader Nelson Mandela, Simon performed before 40,000 cheering fans in Johannesburg's Ellis Park Stadium on this date in 1992. It was a powerfully symbolic event that also underscored the limits of symbolism in addressing entrenched inequality. As New York Times noted, most black South Africans cannot afford to pay up to $30 a ticket or lacking cars to travel to Johannesburg from the outlying black townships. As a result, the audience for Simon's historic South African concert was overwhelmingly young and white. 
And that is your entertainment report for Monday, January 11, 2016. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report, Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.